Greetings. My name is Darren B-Side Young. I'm the Director of Business Development for DOS Audio of America, and I'm here at our sunny South Florida headquarters to show you the DOS control features of the Vantech series. So I've got a Vantech 12A in the white finish here, which is great for weddings, quinceaneras, or houses of worship if you have an install. And today we're gonna to look at the DOS control features of the Vantech 12A. Your main menu here of the DOS control shows you your two inputs, which are my analog inputs with the gain knobs. I have the output, which is the encoder volume. I have a flat line here. This is typically my three band EQ setting. I also have it already predetermined at live mode. We'll show you how to set that up and change that if you'd like. On this side, I've got the output meter bar. That's my VU meter for the output. And then I have 0.0M. That is my delay feature. As you can see, the screen will automatically dim for you. You can press that and it'll re-engage. And then just below the delay, I have the high pass filter, which is currently off. Keep in mind, these two controls will automatically increase or decrease the gain. You do not see a mic line switch because there is not one needed. These are auto sensing controls. The impedance will adjust when you automatically connect an instrument, guitar, or drum machine, either through the quarter inch or XLR combo nitric connection. This aux in is an eighth inch input. It is dedicated and tied to channel one, as well as the wireless capability, which we'll get into in a minute, is connected to channel one as well. You have an output XLR, which you can switch the output between channel one or channel two, or you can leave it in the middle as a mix. This is ideal if you're gonna have perhaps an instrument or a microphone connected separately, and you wanted to take that signal feed and send it to another device. That is all a part of the interface of DOS control. When you click on the encoder, I get the main menu capability. Capability, <clears throat> click. I am accessing audio management controls, get to the main menu. I can go back. I can scroll down to preset. I have my high pass filter, my low, mid, and high three band EQ, which is a stackable three band EQ. I'll explain that in a minute. You also have your delay settings, which are currently set to meters. You can adjust that to feet and options. We have the expander, which is currently off. And then I have my wireless audio connection, which we'll show you in a minute. And then I have options. So I'm actually gonna start with options so I can do some of the default changes that I'd like to do. In my options menu, I've got the brightness and the contrast, which will allow me to increase or decrease the actual contrast or brightness of the screen. This is great if you're indoors or outdoors in dark or light environments. The dimming is the auto dimming. You can actually turn that on or off so if you want the screen to remain on, you can just turn that off. The logo is on. You have the ability to do logo on, off. The menu lock is a very unique feature in that you have the ability to lock the encoder feature from either on, off, or even with a password. This is great or ideal if you have a rental company and you need to rent out multiple speakers, you wanna preset the controls that you would need or the EQ settings, for example, and perhaps lock them. Or if you're at a party in an environment and you wanna keep the crazy drunk uncle from messing with your audio system, go ahead and put your lock feature on. Other options here include the standby, which is off 30 seconds, all the way up to 10 minutes. The standby is great if you want it to be very energy efficient and want it to be conservative of your energy. You have the ability for the entire amp module to completely shut off. Great for quiet environments where you do not want to hear any signal noise coming through the system. Here I've got my delay units, which I can adjust between meters and feet. 
I'm gonna go ahead and set that to feet. And then you have a reset device. This is great if you're not sure of what the last settings were. If you have a fleet or multiple systems, you might want to reset all of them to make sure all of them are starting from scratch with the same default setting. And then your information panel gives you all of the model number, firmware, and actual ID number of the cabinet itself. Again, those are all of the option controls under the main menu. I can go back to get to my default screen of audio management. Now, preset, I can go in and now default is live. You have dance, you have vocals, you have bass boost, which is a dedicated low frequency adjustment. And then you also have monitor mode. You can adjust this depending on the environment that you're typically going to be using the speaker in. In addition to that, you have the high pass filter, which you can turn off, on, or you can adjust it to 100 hertz, or you can adjust it to 63, whatever you need as far as low frequency being cut off from entering the top. You can actually adjust that here, or you would use the control settings on your sub or your DSP. Keep in mind, you do not want to use the crossovers on both the sub and the top, and especially using either one if you're going to use a DSP, an external digital signal processor. I do have a three band EQ, which is low, mid, and high. You have the ability to do all the way from a negative 10, all the way up to a plus six. This allows you to get specific tuning and frequencies, which is a stackable feature on top of the default preset. I can't stress to you how cool that is. Most systems you find on the market today let you do either or. You either use their preset or you do a three band EQ. This allows you to do what's called a stackable three band EQ on top of your default preset. So I'm gonna show you what your main screen will look like after you've made some minor adjustments. So I'm gonna go back and put it on dance mode and I'm gonna adjust my mid to about a plus two or three. And then when we get to the home screen, you'll see the difference. Your delay feature is great and ideal if you're gonna have a staggered setup, for example, or if you're using the speakers as fills, which are closer to uh, an audience member and perhaps not close to your main PA. You might wanna delay those speakers that are closest to the audience. And that way, if you're in the center of the room or in the sweet spot, you've actually now allowed your system to give you a smooth and even timing from the main system to your delayed system by delaying the cabinets that are perhaps closest to the audience member. You also have the expander, which operates as a noise gate. That's just a simple on off setting. And then one of the coolest features is the wireless audio. Wireless audio is really great because you can do this with or without the app. You can connect two speakers to one device. You can pair multiple devices at different times so you don't have to worry about not having your device handy or ready. So if you have a fleet of speakers and a bunch of different tablets that you deploy, you can actually pair them all, but use them or engage them as needed. Only one paired device will control or send signal at a time. In my wireless audio settings, nothing is currently linked at the moment. I would be able to create new link and choose whether I'm going to do a stereo or a left and right configuration. If you wanted to know more about this, make sure you watch the wireless audio and wireless streaming and control videos that are available here on YouTube. So now I'm going to go back to my main menu screen and now you're going to see I've got a little bit of a bump in the mid frequency here. I am on dance mode. I am still at zero dB. I can adjust that up or down as needed. And then I have my delay at zero feet and I am off currently with the high pass filter. So those are some of the cool features we've got on the Vantech 12A, 15A, and the 215A when it comes to your DOS control options and settings. If you wanna know more, be sure to visit us at www.dosaudio.com or follow us on Instagram 
or Facebook at DOS Audio USA.